everybody welcome back back to my channel i'm going to show you some of our favorite casseroles when you think for me anyways when you think southern food i always go back to a casserole it's like the southern thing making a casserole bring a casserole to a potluck at church a potluck at your grandma's house casseroles are like our signature down here I'll be everywhere else. But Time out because I'm bad with words. Um, I know casseroles are everywhere else. I didn't mean that. <laughs> I'm dumb. <laughs> I meant it could be everywhere else's signature as well. Down here, it's our signature, you know? So I want to show you guys some of my favorite. Those are clean dishes, just so you know. I'm letting them drain. <laughs> um, but let's get to it. I'm going to show you some of our favorite. Colin says hi. Hi. <laughs> I want to show you some of our favorite casseroles. Let's do it. Okay, for the first casserole that we love, we're going to do crack hash brown casserole. Yes, that's what it's called. Um, my good old Wally World only had the four pound bags of hash browns. You don't need this many. You just need half of this. It's like 32 ounces, I would say. Um... I was lucky to find this. I was thinking about breaking into my hash brown, the dried ones in the carton. I was thinking about breaking into those if I couldn't find any. But I found them after a week of looking. But anyways, you're going to need 32 ounces of shredded hash browns. Two packages of ranch dip mix. I use the great value. It's cheap. Two cups of real bacon pieces. Two cups of cheddar cheese. I'm making a lot of casseroles in this video with a lot of cheese. That's why I got the big one. It was cheaper to do this than it was to get the box. And two cups of sour cream. Along with a couple seasonings. Let's get to it. I'm going to show you. I have to brag on my boo-boo for a minute. Um, I'm addicted to Dr. Pepper, but I haven't had it in a good two weeks. Oh, God, a long time. They're so expensive. I don't buy it. He surprised me with a McDonald's Dr. Pepper, the best kind, and I love him. Get you a big O casserole dish. First things first, half of the hash brown. Whole container, 16 ounces of sour cream, which is two cups of sour cream. Both of the packages of ranch. Dip mix. Right. I'm eyeballing two cups of cheese. So that's two cups of bacon pieces. We're gonna salt this with some pink Himalayan from the good old Dollar Tree. Potatoes need a little extra salt in case anybody's wondering why I'm using so much salt. We don't want it to be bland and gross. A little garlic powder. Probably a teaspoon or half a tablespoon. Get old onion powder. Same amount as the garlic powder. All right, now, one stick of butter melted. Last, we're gonna do about a half a cup of milk. Okay, now let's put her in the casserole dish. The reason I'm not greasing it is because I ran out of spray and I think it'll be fine. Okay, this part is optional. I just like to do it because it makes it pretty. I'm just gonna put a little bit of cheese on top to make it look complete. Not much, just enough to give it a little boom, you know? Boom. There we go. Now, bake this in the oven on 375 until it's golden brown on top. I would say 30 to 45 minutes. I'll tell you when it's done how long I cooked it for. And she's done. 
I didn't let the cheese on top get super crispy because we like stretchy melted cheese. But if you want it crispy, you can totally leave it in there longer. Here she is, all beautiful. Let's eat it. It's so pretty. Look at it. Can't go wrong with bacon and taters. She cooked about 35 minutes total before I called her done. And Boo Boo's gonna come over here and give a taste test on this. Mm -hmm. Good. Like a lot? Mm -hmm. Thanks. This mine? Yes, it is. Um, also, I keep getting questions about the utensils. You saw him using the wooden. They're the same size as regular, by the way. Um, I'll link them in my Amazon store also, so you can find them easy. <clears throat> All right, beautiful people, we're going to do another casserole for dinner. For dinner. This one is going to be a breakfast casserole, and it is going to be gravy and biscuits included. Don't get so excited. I know it was very exciting. Gravy and biscuits in the casserole, what? <sighs> Let's do this. By the way, went to my local Ingles. I got this on clearance for... $2.14. Oh. Alright. Let's go to it. I'll show you what you need. Okay, this is crazy simple. You're going to need some breakfast sausage. An 8 pack of the jumbo biscuits. You're going to need some eggs. 8 eggs. Some cheese. Milk. Because we're going to make homemade gravy. And you're going to need some flour. Salt and pepper. Let's do this. First thing we're going to do here is cook up this breakfast sausage. All right, just cook her up like usual. I'm going to open my biscuits, break them apart, and put them in the bottom, the bottom of this casserole dish. I found it. I thought I was out of this, but it was just pushed to the back. <laughs> so. You can use homemade biscuits if you want to. This is just a shortcut way. And I'm going to break them into fours and just drop them in there. Just layer it like this. Just going to crumble up the sausage. Alrighty, this is cooked. I want to drain the fat out as much as I can and put this sausage crumble on top of the biscuit. We're going to make our gravy with that fat in there, so don't get rid of it. Alrighty. I left a little bit of the sausage in there because that's how I like to make my sausage gravy. You don't have to. But. Okay, I'm gonna turn down the heat a little bit. And I'm going to add some flour to this hot oil. Eyeballing two tablespoons, maybe three. See what it looks like. That's about two tablespoons. I'm gonna do a little bit more to make it three tablespoons. There we go. So, put that leftover grease. Oops, there was probably a cup, three fourths cups of leftover grease. I added three tablespoons of flour and I'm just gonna let it cook and constantly stir so it doesn't stick and burn. We want it to cook for about two minutes, two to three minutes to get that raw flour taste out because it makes gravy taste blech. Now, I'm going to add milk. I'll taste it for salt. Just know that the pork sausage has salt in it. I just I don't want to overdo it. So, I'm going to wait until it's done before I add salt and pepper. Go. Now while this is getting ready, I'm going to keep an eye on it and stir it really close, but I'm going to go ahead 
You can take eight eggs and whisk them up in a bowl. And adding milk to make them fluffy. Slow and steady is the key to good gravy. Cook it on, I'm just cooking mine on two. Cook it fast, it'll just not feel right. It'll get too thick, it'll get grainy. Slow and steady. I wanna go ahead and add pepper to it because you can't overdo pepper in my book anyway. I am gonna, I'm still gonna wait for the salt. I don't want it to be too salty. I'm not a big fan of salt, dusty as I am not. Okay, I'm gonna taste for salt. Cause she's getting a little thick. A little bit of salt. I'm doing want salt. Okay, let's move her off. My biscuits and the sausage crumble that I put on top. Now, I'm gonna just pour the eggs over that. I have to open that. I would say a half a cup to a cup of cheese. Whatever you want. You could even do this with bacon if you wanted. Bacon's pretty pricey though. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> Okay, the next layer is the gravy. Boom. Wanna ladle the gravy on top. Just like to say, look how pretty my gravy is. I'll do it up close. Look how pretty my gravy is. It's so stinking pretty, I'm proud of it. All right, back to what I was doing. Layer in the gravy. I don't want to just dump it because it would, you know. On top of the gravy, we do another layer of cheese. I know, weird, what? Gravy cheese? Crazy. No, trust me. Boom. Now we're going to cook her for about 35 minutes in the oven on 350. I had to do an up close shot of before. See her? She's pretty. Let's put her in. She's done, yes. You have to stick like a sup, like a knife, a spoon in the middle to make sure the eggs are done in the middle. But look how pretty. Doesn't that look just so bomb? Ugh, let's dig in. I appreciate the up close shot of the layers. Gorgeous. Gorgeous, my friends. How is it, Bray? Mm -hmm. You like it? It's good. All right, that's making another casserole. This casserole is one of my absolute favorites. We haven't had this in probably years. And I don't know why, I just forgot about it. But when I was doing, I was planning this video, it popped in my head and I was like, why have you not made this? I'm a crazy person. All right, let's get to this. So what you're gonna need, first off, I found this pack of chicken breasts on clearance at my Ingles. So I'm gonna use half of this for this casserole and the other half for the next one. A can of real tell. A can of cream of chicken. You're gonna need finely diced bell pepper and onion. Some chili powder. Okay, don't hear me out. They had no, I don't buy name brand Doritos anymore because they're ridiculous in price. $4 for a small bag insanity to me but Audi was out of the generic Walmart doesn't even carry the generic anymore so I wanted a cheap bag of Doritos so I got the tiny bag and this is what I'm doing do what you want but this is what I'm doing because I wasn't spending four dollars on a sack of Doritos anyway and of course you're gonna need some cheese because most casseroles have cheese in it these do but let's get started this is gonna be good oh by the way this is called it's not it's probably not even mexican at all but this is mexican chicken okay go ahead and preheat your oven to 375 and i'm in this process of putting some olive oil 
in a skillet. I have already diced up my chicken and my onions and bell pepper, and I'm gonna cook these together. Pink Himalayan sea salt from the Dollar Tree. Some pepper. This is all I'm gonna cook the chicken in. Salt and pepper. The bell pepper and onion give it flavor, don't worry. Y'all know I season my food. It's gonna be seasoned inside the casserole dish. All right, don't worry. It always bothers me when people like say, why didn't you season your chicken? Maybe they don't want to. Maybe they don't like it. Let people live how they want, you know? If you know what you're doing and you get that nice little crust from sauteing the chicken and you, you add a little liquid, you can make anything taste good with very minimal seasoning. I'm just saying. But y'all know I like my garlic powder and my adobo. So. All right, let's saute this up and then I'll show you the next step. All righty, while these are starting to saute up, I'm gonna take my Doritos and crush them, all right? Half of these are gonna go in the bottom of this, the other half on top, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. She is done, pretty much. So I'm gonna start adding in the Rotel. I want to turn off the stove eyes. Add in the cream of chicken. Now I'm going to add some garlic powder. Told y'all. I would say a teaspoon. Now I'm going to add chili powder. It calls for two tablespoons. An ingredient I forgot to show you earlier, oopsie poopsie. We are going to do a half a cup of this. A half a cup of sour cream, that is. Now we are going to take a cup of cheese and put it in this mixture. And then leave the other cup of cheese for the top. Once again, eyeballed it. I did put a little bit more chili powder because it didn't smell chili powdery enough. <laughs> yes, more cheese because casseroles wouldn't be complete without cheese. She's done. Let's plate her up. He is looking all pretty and cheesy. Mm. Like it? So good. All right, Kaka's ready. He's taste testing too today. Mmm. 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 All right, last casserole for the video. Let's get to this. So, first step, you're gonna need to cook you some chicken and you're gonna need to shred it up. The rest of that chicken in that package, that's what I'm using for this. And the way I like to shred up my chicken, to do it in the Instant Pot. Preheat your oven to 375. A viewer sent me this bowl in the mail and I'm really excited about it. It's so sturdy, April from Bismarck, North Dakota. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm going to use it to make this casserole. What you going to need? A can of diced green chilies. Cream of chicken soup. Two cups of cheddar cheese. The rest of that big old bag I bought. Eight ounces of sour cream. Twelve corn tortillas. Shredded chicken, of course. And some seasonings. So while this is cooking, we're gonna mix everything together. 
quick time out. I forgot to tell you the name of this. It is white chicken enchilada casserole. I forgot to hit record. In this bowl, I added a cup of sour cream, cream of chicken soup, a four ounce can of green chilies, and a cup of shredded cheddar cheese. Now it's time to add the seasonings. Okay, first thing that we're going to add is salt and pepper to taste. I wanna do probably two pinches, two pinches of salt, two pinches of pepper. Onion powder, we are going to do, this stuff makes me sneeze. Probably a teaspoon of onion powder and a teaspoon of garlic powder. Along with this, we're gonna do two third cups of milk and I am eyeballing it. Now let's stir up. When the chicken is done, we're gonna shred it and add it to this. I shredded up that chicken as you can see. And now I just poured it in here and I'm just gonna mix her up. Grease your casserole dish. So you're gonna layer it like it is a lasagna. Now I'm gonna take the rest of that cheese and I'm gonna put it on top. Baker on 375 for about 35, 40 minutes. That was some of our favorite casseroles that I make. Um, notice they all did have cheese because usually the best things have cheese and I wanted to share some of the best with you guys and they had cheese. Cheese is good though. I mean, if you don't like cheese, I mean, they're still cool, but whoa, something I don't understand. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoy these casseroles if you try them and heck far if you won't take some inspiration from these and make it your own do what's best for your family and what you guys like if you like this video give me a big thumbs up helps that algorithm um if you're not subscribed go ahead and hit that red subscribe button down there so you don't miss anything i'm a hoot i'm sorry <laughs> Stay positive and kind, and I love you guys. Bye.